okay, is there going to be a way that I'm going to be able to clap to mark this so I know where to edit it? I don't think so. I'm holding the microphone in my hand. Um, copper, what do I do? What do I, okay, I'll clap over here. I hope that worked. We'll find out in post-production. <laughs> Hi, friends. This is my first time recording a podcast for YouTube on my new camera, and I'm really excited to be doing it just because I love this camera. And when I moved to Europe a few years ago, I sold my camera and all of my production things because I was eat, pray, loving throughout Europe, doing mostly writing and podcasting, not a lot of creative work. But now that I'm living in Paris and I'm settled here, it's kind of become my business. And I love it because as a kid, I played with my mom's camera and called it fun, even though I feel like I probably took it a little bit too seriously. You could ask any girl that lived in my neighborhood, well, I guess the boys too, but the girls, I would direct like little plays and musicals with my mom's camera and we would take photos. And like I said, I probably took it slightly too seriously, but now I get to do it for a living and that's really fun and exciting. YouTube is not a format that I have deeply dived into, but uh, I thought... To be quite honest, I, I look kind of nice today. That's not typically the case when I record a podcast, but uh, you know, look good, feel good. I'm gonna put it on YouTube. And you know what? Maybe I'll even put it on YouTube when I don't look super nice. But I took some photos today for my friend's jewelry brand, which I will totally share on the internet whenever she puts it out. But she's a friend of mine who she's actually from my side of the world. She's from Mexico. And it's one of my favorite things to do in Paris is to discover different cultures and people from around the world. But especially when you find someone that uh, I don't speak Spanish, but I grew up in Texas, which is connected to Mexico. So we just kind of feel like home with each other, which is super nice. And she's so creative and another one of those friends that we get to have fun with cameras and uh, call it work. Today, what we're going to be talking about is a concept that I struggled with as I was growing up from as I was as I was a kid growing up and I kind of thought that my 20s would be my prime because that is what you are taught especially as a woman that the way that you look and your value is at its peak in your 20s because that's where you know your body is considered to look its best even though that's a completely made up construct created to keep women feeling inferior the older that they get but I've been reading Susan Sontag's On Women which isn't new essays but it's a collection of essays that was released within the past year or two just diving into how being a young woman and, and really just being a young person, how age can be weaponized against us, especially by the time that you're almost 30 and you start to feel the pressure of capitalism and the culture climate that we live in that you're behind. Even some of the most successful people that I know, especially creatives, feel so behind in their career when they have achieved things that their 10-year-old self would be in awe of. A couple of years ago, uh, I think it was three years ago, my first video that kind of found the light of a lot of people um, started out with the phrase, your 20s aren't your prime, they're your primer. And it's ironic because now that I am approaching 30 versus when I made that video, I was 25 or 26. I am having to kind of have a taste of my own medicine. You know, it's hard to sometimes take your own advice, but I have for the first time in my life considered like the potency of the meaning of how I look and my achievements and my resume in accordance to my age here on earth. And a lot of that, as I mentioned, has to do with uh, capitalism and just the way that, uh, especially in the Western world, we're looked at of our worth is how much money you've made, what you've accomplished, 
what you look like, all these like very external factors that first of all, we can't always control. But second of all, no one really cares about by the time you're dead. <laughs> I, I think that the meaning of life can only really be found when you are slowing down and when you have the bandwidth to observe what's going on around you. Because first of all, we're not promised another day. But second of all, what better place to be than here? I think about my recovery with anorexia and how so much of my mind was geared toward the future and future exercise, future meals, future control. How can I create these environments of completely controlled circumstances in order to get me to a different place in the future? And when you are actively anorexic, you are always thinking about the next meal, about the next workout, about the next social function, because that's just how your your neurons in your brain have continued to be fired and that's how they have learned to survive. And it's really vulnerable to say, but that form of control is so sweet, which is ironic. <laughs> um, but you look at... I think of the best example is biblically, whether you believe the Genesis story is satirical or true or both or whatever, but Satan didn't come to Adam and Eve trying to sell them a product or like sell them the apple itself. He came to them trying to sell them the idea that they could be God and that they could have control over the function of their future and their life. And I think the same way with a lot of people that struggle with mental illness, that our culture has convinced us that if we can control our futures, then we can be God and we can just decide what's best for us and what feels the best and what will, you know, ultimately give us more success and some sort of fulfillment. But I look around at my life now, several years out of rehab and in recovery and the best moments in my life have not been planned they haven't been achievement based or goal oriented they've been in the present moment with people because I think relationships are more important than control period so when you think about this little section of your life hopefully your 20s are only a small part of the grand scheme of your life they can be a primer to the things that are coming up, but they don't have to be a planned primer. This is not to say I don't believe in financial planning or being uh, cautious or safe with logistical things, but I think that having soft goals and having um, a direction to go in is so much more fruitful for your well-being rather than hitting certain numbers or certain goals or certain achievements. I remember when I was 18 or 19, it was my first year of university. So that summer, you're supposed to get a internship, right? And I wanted to intern with a casting agency in New York City. And I found like perfect housing. I worked so hard on my application and I thought this is going to set me up for so much of the success that I desire to have in the film industry, in the entertainment industry, the older that I get. So with my film degree, with this like really shiny uh, casting agency internship that I knew I was, I was fit for, I was super qualified for, it would set me up towards the future that I was aiming to have because my whole life, the goal was uh, an Academy Award-winning director and being in the entertainment industry, I learned a little bit later on that those achievements actually don't really mean anything. It's the work that you get to do as you're going towards the achievement. I was in the last round of interviews for this internship and I ended up not getting it. And it broke my heart, but it also broke my ego. I thought, well, this is not the plan. I'm not going to achieve my goals. How else am I going to get to where I want to go? 
And I believe the universe doesn't necessarily push you or force you to be down a certain path, but I'm really grateful that the the butterflies flapped their wings in the direction that they did because I wouldn't be living in Paris and I wouldn't have all of the life experience that I've had after I didn't get that internship was when I really started to fall in love with Jesus as a as a person and not just the daughter of my parents or the kid from the church that I went to growing up. I ended up taking a internship and traveling throughout Central America with the church that I was attending. And it obviously got me checked off the internship credit for my school. But more than anything, it it created this really fertile soil for the trajectory of where my soul actually ached to grow. And I don't know if you guys are into astrology, but I know that there's a lot of discourse about it, especially in Christianity, but (laughs) I've been learning about North nodes and South nodes in your natal chart and how before your Saturn returns, I believe, like in the younger part of your life, you are going towards, I think, the South node. And the older you get, you should go more towards your North node. And my South node was very performance-based. And I think it was... I don't know if it was Leo or Aries. I don't remember. Anyway, it was very like performance-based, very um, achievement-based, very outwardly. And my North Node, where I grow uh, as I get older, is much more spiritually based, deep, and intentional. And I know that some of those things might not be true. Take, chew the meat, spit out the bones. But... I I do take that and I do receive that. Being in Hollywood, which I, I lived in LA and I tried to live that life. When I tried to live that life, I realized that it was so ego-based. It was so much about the outsides and not what's on the inside. And now I have Cageless and I find the most fascination in cultural commentary and why humans exist and why we love each other and who God is and the deep things. And anyone who's in their 20s coming from someone who has not lived a few lifetimes, but I have been on a couple different timelines that I didn't expect myself to be on, I would tell you, or even I would tell my 20-year-old self, Don't rush this part of your life. Don't rush any part of your life. Be present in the moment that you're in because I think that's what makes the best memoirs, first of all. You don't get to live this life again. And as cliche as that sounds, it's true. And the more that you look around, the more gratitude that you have for the things that you do have rather than the lack of things that you don't have. And... This part of your life is just temporary. You will continue to grow and become better and have different relationships and cool interactions and encounters, not just with other people, but with yourself. And so I look at my cute dog in in my apartment in Paris, a little girl from Texas who has struggled so much in the mental cage in her brain, I feel grateful. And I I have found more satisfaction and fulfillment in this moment than any goal I've ever achieved, ever. I don't know, getting a visa is actually a really satisfying goal, but that's for a different episode. Lately, I've just been thinking a lot about how happiness is so temporary and so fleeting and the only way that you can really achieve a pursuit of happiness is by the pursuit itself. And if you like to draw, it's by holding the pen. If you like to play a sport, it's by tossing the ball. If you like to act, it's by getting on the stage. It's not about the trophy at the end. And I hope even if no one sees this video or listens to this podcast, my grandchildren will. (laughs) And maybe they'll listen. And if they don't, I guess that's okay too. I'll just speak this into the ether. And I feel like that was just like one long breath. (laughs) Anyway, I would love to know what you think about this subject, what you've learned in your 20s versus what you thought you would achieve and how you can be present in 
today in life in this moment. And yes, I love you so much. I feel like I need to go get a glass of water now. <laughs> I'm wearing a black turtleneck and I'm feeling a little bit like uh, Elizabeth Holmes. Anyone know that? That lore? Oh my gosh, what a great podcast. I listened to that that podcast about her several years ago. What a woman. Wonder what she's doing. I think she was in jail last time I checked. But anyway, hope she's good. Um, love you guys and hope to talk to you so soon. 